Hey, it's Melody. Welcome to A Saner Spin on Crazy, episode 12 this week. Um, this week I'm going to be talking about medication management. Specifically, on Friday, I went and gave a talk in Greensboro, North Carolina, um, at Skepperdong Books, an amazing independent bookstore. I encourage you to go if you're ever there, or if you live there. Um, it was sponsored by the Mental Health Association in Greensboro, which is an amazing organization in and of itself that uh, provides classes to help people who are living with mental illness um, move towards recovery in really meaningful ways. So I was very grateful to them for sponsoring the event as well. Um, at any rate, I met some fabulous people, uh, one of whom came up to me and brought up an issue that comes up a lot. Uh, specifically, she said to me that even to be at the event, which was at 7 p.m. at night, she had to not take her medication uh, uh, because she would fall asleep. Uh, and that idea, and I, I immediately said, well, haven't you talked to your doctor about that? You shouldn't be on something that doesn't allow you to stay awake through the day. Uh, and she said, no, my doctor will prescribe something, and if I don't take it specifically what he prescribes, as he prescribes, then he just won't even work with me. And she was, I believe she was also on Medicaid. Um, so there, and there are other complicating factors, but regardless, uh, I think what you need to be doing is working in partnership with your physician, with your mental health providers, uh, whoever they are. Uh, and if they're not willing to work in partnership with you and to recognize that you know your body better than anybody else, that you are the expert on that, they are the expert on the medicine, and you also have a job, uh, and that is to say how you're responding to it and how they can help you respond better. Um, and I think one of the most dangerous things that uh, psychiatrists can do is put people on more than one medication at once, more than one intervention at once. Um, basically, you don't know what's working. Um, and this is, I mean, in public health, it's just known. You don't know what's working. If you do two things at once, you're not sure which one's working. Is it the combination of the two? Is it one or is it the other? Uh, you just have to go slowly and figure that out. Uh, but if you find that a medication is making your life worse, then you have the right to stand up and say, this isn't working, we need to try something else. And if your mental health provider isn't willing to work with you there, then you need to find a new mental health provider. No matter what that, uh, no matter what your situation is, there's a way to do it. Um, if you need to find a patient advocate within your community, uh, if you can't advocate for yourself and you feel like you need somebody else to be there to stand up with you, I encourage you to go to your local uh, DBSA, Depression Bipolar Support Alliance, or NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, uh, meetings, or like in Greensboro, if you have a mental health association like they do in Greensboro, um, and other just civil rights organizations, there's so many different places where you can meet people who can help connect you with advocates um, that if you're unable to do that for yourself, they will help you. Uh, but when it comes to, for example, non-compliance, there's a reason that, you know, people wonder, oh, why would somebody be non-compliant? Well, maybe if you're working with a doctor like that, you'll be non-compliant. And there are unfortunately a lot of doctors like that, um, who my way or the highway and unwilling to, and these are the kinds of medications that you need to consult and say, this is, and this isn't working. Um, and putting you to sleep isn't treatment. You have the right to be awake and conscious and live a full life with a mental illness. You have the right to do that. Um, and unfortunately, it's up to you. It's your obligation to stand up for yourself and say, uh, this is or isn't working. And if you're not willing to work with me, in fact, I've hired you. You are, whether I'm on Medicaid or any other insurance, you are working for me. And if you're not working for me in a way that helps me, then I have the right to fire you as well. So it's not even a matter of just the doctor saying, well, I won't work with you. Like, good for you. I won't work with you, you know. Um, so you're the one as the patient uh, who has the right to fire uh, your healthcare providers and look for ones that are willing to work with you in ways that lead you towards recovery. And by recovery, I don't mean catatonia and just being asleep all the time. Uh, that doesn't count. Anyway, that's what I have to say for this week. Next week, I will be back.